Hello everyone, my name is Ravi and I, uh, I recently got recommended for UPC CDS 2019 second one. So I will be telling about my experiences and some of the tip, tips that I used that may help you. So let's begin. Okay, so we'll start with first day of second set and that is psychology. So the first task is that. So in that we have to write 12 stories and the big last one is blank. I didn't prepare for that. Actually, I wrote 4-5 stories to make up my mind how much I need to write in 4 minutes and how should I frame my stories. So, with this practice, I went for the examination and fortunately I was able to complete all the stories uh, with most of the, and most of the stories with my own skills matching my personality. Most of the stories were on struggle, hard work, urban challenges, rural challenges, economy and something like this. And for the last slide, I wrote one of my own incident of my pre-final year of my college where I shown some leadership skill. So that's much I wrote. And the only suggestion that I can give you for the TAT is that don't make up your stories before going to the examination. If you want to practice, just practice it for timing and practice it for formulation of the story and not for content. So that's only suggestion I can give you for the TAT. So the next task that comes in the series is VAT. For the VAT, I practice almost 4-5 sets of 60 words each in strict time limits and that helped me with the time timings and I was able to complete 58 out of 60 in the real test. Few of the words even came same as I practiced so I just wrote the same exact statement as that they were my own thoughts. And for the tips point of view, I can only say that just practice a lot in strict time limits and don't overthink during the practice and try to make a bit of more creative thoughts, more creative statements. For example, in my case, one of the word was old. So I just wrote uh, older people comes with a lot of experience. And another I can give you example of society. So society for, for society, I wrote uh, Honest people are loved by society. So that's pretty much for the VAT. So the next task is SRT. In SRT, we have to complete 60 situations in 30 minutes. So for this, I didn't practice. Rather, I made up my mind to write exactly same responses that I would do in the real life. And with this thought, I went to the test and I tried my very best to write exactly same responses that I would do in the real life. And I also improvised my writing style to include a lot of commas and semicolon to just shorten my time for the each responses. And I also focused on a quality of response rather than quality of language or quality of sentence making English. And with this, I was able to complete 43 out of 50, 60 uh, situations. And the interesting part is that I didn't left any situation in between I tried to complete all the situation from 1 to 43 and I think this shows that I don't want to evade any situation. So that's only improvisation and that I did there. Uh, for the tips part, I can say that just try, try to write as exact responses as you would do in the real life and nothing, nothing extra. Don't make yourself Superman or don't make yourself a beggar. Just try to be, just be yourself and that's the only thing that I can say. So that's pretty much for the SRT. So the last task for the first day was uh, SD, self description. I think this is a very important test where you have to write about your own self, your own weaknesses, your own strength, and what your parents, what your teachers, what your employer, friends, things about yourself. So I just consulted my friends about, just in casual talks, I asked them about my strength and weaknesses and I think I write the I wrote the same thing for my own for my employer I just took his fit, my manager's feedback and uh, wrote those things for family I inquired about their thoughts about myself and in the things that I can improve and about my own thoughts I just introspect, introspected my own self I think introspection is very much important it will, it will incline, it will not just help you in SD but also in TAT, VAT and SRT and even GTO and interview. Uh, this will make you a blueprint of yourself that you would like to use because your own strength and weaknesses make up the TAT stories, the situation responses, even the words VAT and also in GTO 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ़ यू आर वीक इन कम्युनिकेशन ऑब्वियसली यू विल बी नॉट वेरी कम्फर्टेबल विद लेक्चर रेट इन द जी टी सो आई थिंक सेल्फ डिस्क्रिप्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड सेल्फ इंट्रोस्पेक्शन इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एस एस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू टिप्स दर इज़ नो टिप्स फॉर द सेल्फ डिस्क्रिप्शन जस्ट राइट I practiced the self description one or two days before the SSB in the train itself. So I think you should you should write your self description beforehand and prepare it because 15 minutes is not very much time to think and write there itself. So just practice it and prepare it and self introspection is very much important. I must say this is for the SSB part. Uh, hello everyone my name is ravi so in this video series i would today i will be talking about gto so that is second day and third day of stage 2 so the first task that comes in the comes in this is gd and for this we have two gds the first one is optional between two topics that gto present in front of you and the second one is decided by the gto uh, so in my case the first uh, that topic that we choose as a group from the two topics that gto gave us is a uh, frequent protest by student unions and for this the gto gave us three solutions the first one is handled by democracy the third one is handled by police force and the th and third one is handled by inducting in in the mainstream politics so i must say my group was very violent everyone everybody was shouting on their throat and most of the them supporting either uh, handled by dem democratically listening to their voices or taking strict police action some even they tried to deviate the group to other topics like uh, ca and bjp but uh, uh, but few of them just retreated on the on the tracks uh, one thing that the, my group was missing uh, that nobody was talking about inducting uh, in the mainstream politics and that's uh, where i saw some opportunity i and i stated that uh, many leaders many ground worker leaders have emerged from uh, student student uh, politics for example i gave the example of uh, arun jetli and moreover uh, when we talk about democracy we should induct them in de democratically in the mainstream politics hear their voices in the parliament or in the legislative assembly and then figure out the solutions so this is one of the things that i think i did good i really spoke uh, three or four points in the whole first gd but uh, out of them a few of a uh, few of them were very valid and transformed my, uh, our group discussion into very healthy one so i think that helped me in my favor and for the second gd uh, we were given the topic of uh, accidents how can we avoid accidents so some of the solution that gto gave us was uh, strict rules uh, infrastructure and and toll uh, and multiple tolls that are present in our road so in the, in these gd again the people were shouting and in fact uh, in last gd and this gd uh, in both of the gd gto uh, interrupted us twice in the whole, both gd so and urged us to maintain some decorum but we were still shouting like hell uh, we i was able to give one or two points few of them uh, i can mention that uh, one of one of that that are a uh, road uh, traveling speed is much more without toll in fact is uh, much greater than other developed countries but because of the toll uh, we are we have reduced the every speed of the highways and second point that i i have i gave a innovative solution that we can design our uh, lanes in such a manner uh, that uh, that the lanes are divided on the basis of speed for example if you have a If you want to go on a speed of 100 km per hour on a highway, you should take the leftmost lane and something like this. So uh, uh, these solution are already present on uh, in the other foreign countries. So if you would uh, read some news, you will get to know all the th all these things. So the second GD was not very great for my for my own point of view because I was hardly able to speak one or two points. But uh, I must say that I I was not shouting like anything, but I was able. But I was only trying to put up my own points in a very decent manner, and that's thing I can say that. Uh, for the GD, I would only suggest you to read news. Uh, there is a YouTube channel known as Study IQ Education that publishes very good news on daily current affairs. So this uh, uh, this will help you. Although I was reading news as well, I was uh, in fact in the 
PIQ, I wrote uh, reading news as my hobby. So those things help me. Uh, uh, one more thing that do not just start shouting with your points. Just try to be a more wise person there. Speak on a very good occasion. Speak with, uh, speak with very good points. And don't just try to focus on your points only. Try to gain the knowledge actively there as well. Just listen to the points of the, your groupmates and try to reform them. Try to try to think that where where my group is going on. How should I support my group rather than you are focusing on your own points. And also, if you are good in communication, you are, if you are good in or, or, oration skill, this is a very good task that you can ace it. So I think if you are uh, you you should practice two things: reading news on a daily basis, transforming your own opinions. For example, uh, my uh, SSB is for CDS. So by the time people are here for CDS, they have already qualified CDS exam. They are already 22 or 23 years old. So they have the opinions for most of the topics. So I think making opinions is a very good thing that you can do not just for your SSB but your own life as well. So yes, please do speak speak good uh, good points, uh, read news, and try to focus on your literary skill. That's the only thing that I can say about the GDP. So uh, the next task that is uh, GPE. In this uh, task you have given with one sand model. Uh, the tutor will explain you the sand model. And there is a sheet with a problem. With a few of problem. In fact four of them to be precise. And you have to write your solution. And then discuss it later with your mates. So, uh, so I focused uh, on presentation of my writing. I initially I wrote the priorities and then the solution and then at last the conclusion of how I will manage those problems and how will I divide the group. So I urged you to practice writing rather than practice content again. Uh, so, uh, for the discussion part again the group was very explosive. Uh, in fact in this GP task as well we were interrupted two twice by the GTO to maintain that equilibrium but we, st we were still shouting like hell again. I was able to give one or two points that was not very important I must say. Uh, there were one or two points more in my mind but I was not able to speak in the group. So that's how GP went. At last when the whole discussion was complete uh, we nominated one of, of our groupmate to narrate our story, uh, narrate our group story or solution. Uh, in GPI, I must say that you do not superimpose your own solution rather than go with the group. If your group is planning to do something which you seems is a correct one, just go with them uh, regardless of your own uh, solution. So at last, uh, GTO asked us if anyone has any uh, addition to be made or any any other thoughts. So I spoke those points that were, my, were in my mind that was I was not able to speak in the discussion part and so did two or two more people so that's how GP went the only thing that uh, practice the writing thing because that thing is only thing that remains with the GTO the written part and that's pretty much for the GP I don't uh, say that my GP was very good because I was not able to speak much although I think my solution was not uh, in line with the group solution but I went with the group solution so that's how my GP went so the next task is PGT. So this is one of the most interesting tasks in the GTO. You must be feeling that G, uh, PGT, uh, GT, command tasks, GOR, all are physically, physically exhausting tasks. But I must say that these are uh, these are test of your mind rather than your own uh, physical activities. So uh, in PGT, uh, I have attended three PGT tasks and this. Uh, PGT task was worst of all the three. Our group was shouting like hell. We were not able to implement a solution. We were not giving perfect solutions. Uh, they were we are given us four tasks in PGT. We were hardly able to complete the two of them. We were on third third of them when the bashing from the GDO started. So uh, in the very first uh, few of them just start uh, picked up the uh, bully plank and. Uh, rope load and just went away without knowing that there were a few people at the back as well so the pgt uh, didn't uh, go that way and for that we had a fair share of gto bashing although few of the people were implementing solution few of the people were uh, finding solution 
so nothing much to say about pgt of my task but uh, uh, but i must say that if you are going for a ssb you must have an idea of, of pgt task just try to google or youtube some uh, videos you will get to know the basic things and i think those basic things are required to have a you are, actually you uh, need you need to think of solution there with a with a thing that you have given and if you have a prior uh, prior exposure to that you will be able to give better solution but i think this is a again a challenge of mind how good a solution you can find uh, so no, so nothing to say about pgt if you have good if you are good at logical skills you have a bit of exposure to the ground level of fatta and balli you will be able to do good things if you have a good command on your group mates so that's it don't try to just uh, just be aggressive in the group task few of my few of my group mates in the in the group uh, gave some uh, f uh, use some abusive words so that i don't think should be used there uh, so just go with a group follow your group or just lead your group if you can and just give you a shot there is nothing 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 much i can say just practice practice some youtube videos and that's the only thing i can tell you so the next task is gor this is a more of a fun task than a actual task so in this just choose a very good a slogan shout with your uh, group mate shout run with them just do all the obstacles have fun just keep in mind that do not intentionally break any rules just try to avoid breaking any rules help your teammates just pr uh, prioritize your group uh, upon yourself do not just jump over every obstacles and leave the group behind and and just do not break any rules if you do break just repeat the obstacles uh, in my part uh, there was some provision or you can say uh, that i i thinks i did in the gor is that in my uh, sd i wrote helpfulness as one of my strength or one of my things that my friends say about me so uh, intentionally or unintentionally i was helping my groupmates in the gor i was uh, one of the last people to cross the obstacle after helping my uh, group uh, uh, there was one obstacle where uh, you have to climb a, a wall i was picking up all of my groupmates and they throwing over the wall like in the slang slang language but at last i was le left behind and there was nobody to pick uh, pull me up on the or there were hardly anybody one guy to pull me up on the wall i was not able to climb so the gto told me to just cross it so things some went like this so I would say just be yourself. Don't tonight try to be make yourself a superficial one and enjoy this task. There is nothing more to say about this task. So the next task was HGT. Uh, it is more of a similar to PGT with a half group divided. So we were a group of nine people. So four of them or five of them was with me. We were given a simple solution. Uh, I was able to give one idea and that helped the group to cross the solution. So that is one of the highlight of HGT. Uh, again there was some shouting in the HGT as well there were people who were uh, who were applying absurd ideas but eventually we crossed the obstacle so i think HGT went a bit of average uh, again nothing to say about HGT same as PGT just try to apply your ideas try to go with the group and that's it so after HGT the last task for this day is a uh, lecture aid lecture aid in this task you have to speak for three minutes by after preparing for three minutes so uh, the topics if you are going for the first time i must say that the topics that are given uh, are, are are a wide range from my favorite teacher to uh, complex geopolitics topics so if you want to command the content part of it just uh, please uh, read news and read all the articles form your opinions and uh, do stuff like that and the other thing that matter here is confidence if you if you are confident with your content you can deliver a very good uh, lecture there in my case uh, my oration skill was not very great and in fact i wrote the same thing in sd as well uh, so uh, my top uh, i i was given four topics i don't remember the uh, other three but uh, the topic that was on top and i chose that was the uh, importance of festivals in uh, geopolitical india so i spoke about that I started very, uh, very well, uh, very well, uh, taking the example of how puris were only made in uh, 
villages during fest uh, festivals but now it has been common so uh, so the festival has the uh, has the aura of uh, uh, touching the livelihood of uh, from rich to uh, poor so i started with that but i forgot one point that uh, that i prepared about the economic impact of the uh, impact of the festivals and so my uh, lecture was finished uh, in less than uh, 2 minute 30 seconds uh, before the uh, uh, precaution bell so i think this is one of the blunder that i did in lecture it please do not do this i must say that uh, prepare well uh, speak with confidence ha huh, uh, one more thing that i uh, whatever i spoke i spoke with much confidence ranging from the importance of festival and then uh, how it helps to culturally organize our country and things like that so that's i think uh, he may have uh, noticed it so that's how lecture went Uh, the only way to perform good in uh, lecture is to improve your oration skill, especially in front of your uh, group mates. So just speak in front of your mirror or your family members and read lot of news, read lot of lot of articles. This will really help you. So this is all about the uh, first day of the GTO. Uh, so the next task is actually day three of the second stage, and that is uh, individual obstacles. Before the starting of the obstacles, uh, our physical trainer they are present. I just made up do all the exercises and few few kilometer of one kilometer of running as well. So just charged it up. This and I initially thought that this exhausted me, but this really helped me in the IO. In the IO, uh, we were first demonstrated all the individual task by the uh, by the commandos or you can say the people there, and then we were have to perform uh, the task. Uh, in the Vizag Center, you uh, you are uh, you are performing the task with one another one another person, and to do not interfere in between both of them, you you have to uh, uh, pick up the other obstacle that what the other person is doing. So I did uh, nine of them. I forgot where the one of them was, and that was double barrel jump, one of the easiest point. uh there was fun part as well we have to shout ah uh, in the between for uh, for obstacles uh female uh, uh icons so i shouted my mother's name uh, so things did uh, uh, well in the io just make sure you do not enjoy yourself that you do not you are not able to perform your activities for the run try to secure yourself do your activities in the in the manner And that the demonstrated and do not try to break your rules. A physical activity, ah, uh, this is really a phys physically exhausting task. So if you are have practiced some physical activity before and if you are playing some games, we will be able to do it good. There were people who did fourteen of them. There were people who did five of them, and it doesn't matter actually. I did nine of them with, ah, uh, so, so nothing to say about this. Just practice it. Uh, with some games that you are playing on normal day, or if you are going for SLB and you are not physically very active, just try to run on in three minutes. Actually, the IU task is for three minutes, so if you can run three minutes, you can easily complete all the task. Uh, even I practice for running three three uh, three minutes before going to the SLB for two three days. That's it for the IU task. After break of for the break first, uh, the next task was a uh, command task. and this is i think one of the most important tasks for me in the ssb and because uh, i'm earlier i said that the pgt of our group and ngt of our group didn't go that well so i think uh, gt wanted to test us in the command task our command task uh, was like 3 or 4 hours so all the people completed in 3 or 4 hours i must say 3 hours at least uh in my command task command task before command tags i was just asked few of the questions uh he asked me where are you from actually uh, all the information that he asked me was noted down before and when i was giving the lecture it so uh, uh so he asked me few of the things where my father is posted where i am doing work something like that even my uh, employer things so at last he told me that i am expecting something from you and he pressurized a bit and uh, i was asked to just call few of my subordinates so i called two of them uh in the command task i must say that the command task was of average quality for me average difficulty i was given the command task is more like a three structure one middle one in the left one in the right and i have to complete it so 
few of the things that I kept in mind is I, I encourage the group a lot. I encourage my subordinate a lot and strictly restricted them to break any law and I was instructing them for every point that I was making, for every step I was making. For example, if there is something that I had to done, for example, I have to just lay the plank and cross it. I was crossing it. I was one of the, I was, for, I was crossing this first always. And I think one of the leadership qualities that I shown there. And then uh, uh, when the, all the group, all the subordinate cross it, I just encourage them very good gentlemen. And then for every point, I was just instructing them, encouraging them. And that really cheered up all the subordinate, subordinates as well. And I was able to complete it in two or three minutes, although he was, he changed a few bit of things. He changed some, some white structures to blue, some blue structures to red and further on. But eventually I was able to complete in two or three minutes. I think that was the very good time for this because he initially told me I will give you 15 minutes. So, and he also gave me a very good conclusion. That's how GTS command test went. So, uh, in command test, just have a, a group, a good command on your subordinates, instruct them well, do not, uh, tell them to not break any rules and all those things. Encourage them. Encouragement is a very good thing. It will help you to help your subordinates to perform better with much more interest. So these things went uh, well for me and I was able to complete in command task. I think command task was one of the most highlight thing, highlighted things in my uh, uh, my uh, GTO. So I must say that I did command task uh, very good. Uh, so the last task for the GTO was a full group task FGD and I must say that group was much more relaxed this time. We were not shouting that much. We were trying to hear all the all people ideas and eventually we did. Even we broke one of the obstacles, uh, one of the obstacles there. So uh, that uh, PGT actually uh, we were not able to complete a fourth task in the FGD. We were only third when the GTO bashing started. So he gave us the fourth task as FGT and we eventually we completed it good. Uh, we did good in uh, FGT as a whole group. So that's how FGT uh, completed. I don't think he was noting anything in the FGT because he just kept his uh, diary somewhere and just trying to make him some fun with us and that's it. So I think FGT was not very considered uh, uh, in our thing. But I must say that do your best, uh, go with the group and just enjoy the FGT and all, all YouTube tasks. GTO task is more of a enjoying and a group uh, task than uh, actual game. It's a kind of a game rather than task. So just enjoy, enjoy it as much as, as much as you can and give your best. That's it. Uh, this is all for the GTO. So in the next series of videos, I will be talking about interview experience of mine. And also I will try to make the video of how my medical procedure uh, went. So all, all the best and thank you. Hello everyone. So in this part of the video series today, I will be talking about my interview experience. We can say that interview is, our, is one of the most important part in the whole SLE procedure and it happens to be that the senior most officer is generally the interviewing officer. So my interview was conducted on the second day of stage two, that is after first day of GTO. So it all, it, it was conducted around 1.30 PM. So I was, I was, I was informed at 12 o'clock almost. So after the GTO, I took bath, just, uh, dressed in a light green color shirt with dark gray trouser and uh, formal black shoes. I was not wearing a tie, but some of the people were wearing a tie. So my interviewing officer was a Komodo Ryan and he was also the president of the board. For the first five minutes of the interview, he uh, asked me some warm up question to make me comfortable. He asked me that where did you come from, how much time it took, how were uh, how did you spend your time in the train and also uh, some tricky questions like what did you do for the time you read the station and the time of reporting. So I answered them fairly good with some details like train number, station it crossed and something like this. So after that he told me that he will be assessing me for the next 45 minutes about my personality so that he can give the inputs to the board. So uh, he started with the education. And for the, for the education, he fired almost 10 questions related to my education right from uh, t class 10th, 11th, 12th, and then graduation, co-curricular activities, extracurricular activities, what are the achievements that you achieved, and 
marks in the in the whole uh, timeline and all these things so i answered them all the things uh, i forgot one or two points that he asked so at the last when i answered he i asked him to what are the uh, points that you, i missed so he uh, reiterated the questions and i answered them uh, in the same uh, just after this he cross question few the things like who was my favorite teacher who was the, what was my favorite subject and why so so uh, this is the education part of the interview uh, further on he asked me about my uh, personal life uh, family and also my extended family so he first asked me about where did i uh, where have i uh, lived my childhood so i told him that my father is already in army so i lived most of my childhood in the uh, northwestern region of india that is jammu and kashmir and punjab uh, so uh, then he asked me about qualification of my parents and also asked me about my extended family who are the members that are still present in the extended family and also he he asked me to uh, take few of the names of your cousins so i named them and he also asked me about uh, what are the neighbors who are the neighbors of your of your family and what are they doing so i told them about my neighbors for both my sister village as well as the present uh, address so then again he asked me about my relationship my parents so how do i interact with them so i told them that i i was living in a hostel and now i am working in bangalore so i generally the communication is from uh, wireless that is on phone and i do visit them every diwali or every uh, twice in a year so something like this uh, then he asked me about what of the what are the types of question that you generally discuss or with your mother as well as your father so i told them about the things that i discuss with my mother and my father and and uh, also about my brother he asked me about my brother what he is doing so i told him and also the age difference and few few other things and then he asked me about to compare myself my with my brother with three points each so i compared compared myself told some of the pros of mine and some of the pros of him and what are the things that i i should learn from him so these are the things that were asked my family and my personal life continuing on my personal life he asked me about my friends uh, who are the friends in school and then college and then what are the inspiration that you took from them what did you learn from them how did you help them and few of the questions like this so nothing much on friends actually just few uh, questions on uh, prim level that's it so after my personal life uh, we came to the discussion of my professional life uh, since i am already working in bangalore see he asked me about my job profile Uh, how did i get this job what is the salary what is the work culture how many hours do i work what are the responsibilities what is my manager name the last conflict my with my manager and hell lot of questions for the first time in the interview uh, i was th- uh, i was feeling that i am getting grilled he was asking very tough questions as well that uh, you why uh, you are getting already you already have a job very good job in the corporate why do you want to come to defense so i gave my answers like my fa- I, my father is already in army so i have lived with him uh, for quite a quite a time i went to the a- mi room when i get injured i go to the csd when i need some cosmetics i go to aps by army bus so i have already surrounded my uh, childhood with army so i just i, th- I think it's time to pay back so i already achieved my adulthood so things like this and uh, after convincing him that i why, why i want to join defense he asked me just in case he gave me actually a hypothetical situation that just in case your defense uh, dream do not go uh, what would you be doing in next 5 years so i explained him so what are the things so uh, he actually uh, tried to grill me here for example uh, he asked me that uh, just in case uh, you are currently in your company uh, what would you be doing in 5 years so i told him that i would be i may be leading a team and be a, a software engineer 3 so what are the duties at that time what are the responsibilities at that time of mine and then he uh, uh, then he asked me that uh, you are taking the example of my current job so will you be staying in your own company f- uh, will you be staying in this company for the next 5 years so initially i tried to give a very diplomatic answer that it uh, the it will depend on my situation but he told me not, not to be diplomatic and say the truth so i uh, explained him that corporate is very much uh, f- uh, filled with opportunistic people and we people are very 
uh, good at grabbing opportunities so uh, and they are new technologies that come in the market especially in the IT sector so just in case if new technologies come and new opportunities come I may grab them so he was quite uh, uh, impressed by this thing so this is how my professional life went and he asked me a few of the questions but that is the uh, that is that was personal to my job profile so i gave them answers so i i i would suggest you to just research on yourself introspect yourself how we, how you are doing in personal life how you are doing in professional life you should know actually every bit of your own life your family members your things related to yourself right from the meaning of your name to the to the age of your grandfather the, these things are uh, should you should know actually the, these things make you responsible so after my professional uh, questions, uh, now he started to ask me some ad hoc questions. Uh, some of the questions that I remember, are, he told me to speak three minutes about my college and that is Army Institute of Technology. So I told him about how did it, how did it started, what are the objectives and, and things like this. And also told him about my uh, about a senior junior relationship that is similar to the other academies in the Defense Forces. So something like this. So then he went on to my uh, my personal life and he asked me about three qualities that I have that you think I have and three of the negative as well. So I spoke the same thing that I wrote in SD. Then he came on my parents. He again asked the same question about my parents, both mother and father. And he also cross questioned those things. Uh, I can actually I can see that uh, he was carrying four paper. One of them was my PIQ. And other three I don't remember, but he, uh, he was constantly writing something about me through, throughout the whole interview. And uh, also he uh, asked me to compare myself with my brother again actually. He already asked me in the family section and then again he asked me to compare myself and how, how do I help him. So I told him then how I, sh I help him academically and, and socially as well. So these are the things that, uh, that I remembered was asked in the whole interview. And after that, he told me that, uh, what do, do we have any questions in mind? So I actually prepared two, two of the questions and one of the questions that, so I actually asked him three questions actually. The first question that I asked him, what is the life on sea? How do you, uh, what is the life while sailing? So he gave me that, he gave me a very abstract answer that life is very, uh, not that uh, luxurious in the sea. You have to con continue to have a like. Uh, be on the officer watch. Uh, for example, he was giving the example of a uh, executive officer in Navy. He told me about how, what are the responsibilities. Actually, he was quite uh, responsive in the answers. He was very interested as well. So he, he was giving very detailed answers. He gave, he told me about the responsibilities and the duty, duties the officers perform. Then the second question was very interesting that I asked. I asked him how. How is the time zone managed on the ship? Since the ship is continuously sailing and traveling through the time zone, how is how it is uh, being managed in the ship? So he told me. So in the first line, he told me that uh, for every four hours we add thirty minutes. So I, I was not able to understand it. So I asked him about the the details. So he he so he explained for the next three or four minutes about how do you manage. Uh, time zones uh, since the ship is sailing at almost 40 or 50 km per hour at a highest speed so time zone management is not that difficult from the airplanes so so after uh, when we are going toward west we when we are going toward west we actually had 30 minutes after every four hours to manage the time zone and when we are going towards east we uh, subtract for 30 minutes in every four hours so if for, and you also gave me a funny example that uh, uh, while I was going to Qatar, that is west to India, I was working for uh, four and half hour, four and half hours of my watch duties, and I was when I was coming back, some other officer was officer watch officer of the watch, and he was uh, of officer of the watch for the three hours thirty minutes, so something like this. Then he then I asked him about uh, what are the responsibilities and duties of the IT cadre. That is gen that is started recently in the navy. So he told them most of the things are uh, outsourced and the career prospect as currently is not that great in the IT sector and IT cadre in in the navy currently. But he also assured me that in few years IT would be very uh, very much integrated in the navy and we will have a very good cadre as an IT as well. 
so these are the questions that he asked me and by and and we ended our interview i we shook hands i took my papers and went back so these are the things that how it went you can have some, summed up the things like psychology gtu and uh, interview you must have seen that whatever you write on your piq whatever you write in psychology and whatever you do in the gtu gram and whatever you say in the in front of the uh, interviewing officer if you if, if your uh, things matches if the things align you will get recommended you will surely get recommended but if your things get, are conflicting you could there's really a chance that you there is rarely chance that you will get recommended so the uh, the things the saying that uh, what if you think what you do what, and what you speak if you are it is same you get recommended is actually true and i feel the same thing also uh, motivation is a very important factor when it comes to selection in defense forces so one thing that kept me motivating one thing that kept me going was uh, will i be able to answer myself no for the whole lifetime to the question that do you have it in you so i think this is a this is a question actually uh, kept me moving and this is a, enough question to be asked to someone who aspired to be in defense forces so that's how it went so let's catch up for the conference in medical science in the next videos till then bye thank you hello everyone so my name is ravi and today in this uh, video of the series i will be talking about conference so conference is a very simple task in conference you will call one by one by your chest numbers and the your psychologist your gtu and your interviewing officer will discuss about your performance for, of the past 3 days and we'll see if you are right fit for the forces or not so same thing happened on my day uh, my chest number was 16 so 15 people had the conference before me uh, when my turn came i was made to wait almost 10 minutes before i i entered the hall so i was called after 10 minutes those 10 minutes were very exciting and nervous as well because i have heard many times that people who are made to wait uh, generally get recommended so i was happy and nervous as well at the same time so i went in i was asked very simple question like how is the stay how can you compare your uh, last sb with this one uh, what task did you uh, did well from your last one and uh, rate yourself i rated myself 7 so they asked me where did you lose those 3 points so i explained them about my few tasks in gtu and a uh, few questions in interview so after that uh, they just wished me luck good luck and also they uh, at last asked me if you get recommended what will you do so i just uh, told them i will uh, buy a good pair of shoes and start running so this is how my conference uh, went in after uh, the conference uh, uh, when i interacted with my uh, batchmates they told me that they were asked the same questions almost so this is how conference uh, went in also a few things to keep in mind before conference for example suppose you are asked some questions in uh, interview or mini interview before the command task just and you are not able to answer those at that time just remember those answer frame your answers and you may can answer them in the conference itself so after the after the conference a uh, result was declared that was very nervous for, for me for other people as well so six people out of uh, th- uh, 28 25 were recommended all six uh, were repeaters so this is how my ss went in in the next video i will be talking about my uh, medical experience and how the medical went in so by then thank you bye hello everyone so my name is ravi and in this video i will be talking about uh medicals of ssb so medicals is quite time consuming task and and sometimes it takes more time than your own ssb so there are five major department that's need to be clear to de- to be declared fit and they are uh, dental uh, ent eye department medicine and surgical department so one by one i will telling you telling you about my experiences and what are the things that are checked or that i examined in these department so let's begin i have also attached uh, the links for the medical standards of army navy and air force in the description so just check it out in case you have a detailed uh, you need some detailed information uh, so for the medicals you will be uh, fill you will be told to f- uh, fill four five forms and each form will have the option for each department you will post uh, pasted photos and your identification mark will be written and those identification mark will be 
till with at, uh, is uh, will be with you for the whole life as it is written on the ID, uh, ID card of the defense forces uh, so for the for my first day uh, i went to the dental department i was checked uh, for my dental points cavities and other things and um, i was told that most people do not get rejected in this uh, department and most people have the required laid down procedures so th this is how my dental uh, department went and it hardly took uh, less than half an hour for the dental checkup so i was declared fit in dental one uh, after that uh, on the same day i i was told to give my blood and urine samples uh, that would be used uh, in the medical medicine department so on the first day i gave my uh, blood uh, urine and also my chest x-ray that is also would be used in the medicine department so this is how the first day of my uh, medical went the person who was responsible for me had uh, taken the appointment for the ultrasound abdominal ultrasound and this is also to be used in uh, medicine department so on the second day in the morning itself uh, without any breakfast i was told to report to the ultrasound and thereafter in uh, one hour or so I, my ultrasound was done the report although i got the report, report later but i was declared for in the ultrasound so nothing abnormal so on the second day actually uh, if people were having their medical conference so i waited for them and nothing happened on that day for me so on the third day uh, we decided to go for the eye testing or ent so uh, for ent uh, the uh, ent was quite quick, quick as well uh, in ant department uh, there will there will be a person who would be holding a placard and will be revolving his uh, fingers around your es and someone will uh, uh, someone will uh, tell some numbers and you have to repeat it so just to test your uh, li listening skills so after that uh, i was checked with my throat my nose and any other abnormalities abnormalities i have in ent so i will declare uh, fit as well there and all the people who were with me were all declared fit in ent as well so this is how my third day went on the fourth day uh, there was some some kind of that the i uh, the i department has the uh, operation theater day so that they were busy and medicine for the for the medicine as well people uh, doctors were not there so i i was not able to do anything on fourth day so on fifth day uh, we went to the i department and uh, my eye was checked my powers were checked uh, my my vision was checked my vision was 6 by 12 so that is the uh, laid down procedure actually for the navy 6 by 12 and also uh, for color blindness they will uh, they will put you in a dark room for 10 20 minutes and they will show you some colors red green yellow and they, and they will ask you to tell the colors so this is how the color color uh, blindness is checked so i was declared fit in uh, i as well although for the i i was called again for the next day just to check my vision actually uh, in the i you will a uh, few drops would be uh, given to your eye just to uh, st uh, loosen the mus ciliary muscles to check the cornea so that's why i was called uh, next day to check the vision and i was declared uh, fit on the next day uh, so for the medicine i went so the next department was medicine so uh, in the medicine department uh, first thing that all the reports like blood urine uh, and ultrasound they were checked the uh, the doctor had a good eye on those results and uh, all and for my case all the results were good there was normal so he checked my heartbeat uh, my pulse rate and those thing height weight ratio i was overweight by 2 kg so he just told me to reduce a weight by 2 kg before going to the academy so i just i'm doing those those thing so all those things were checked and then again heart heart beat and all those thing complex things i don't even know what what he was checking and he told me to just walk in a straight line with your eyes closed with your eyes open and few things like that so that is how my medicine department went in and actually uh, for the surgical department that is the next department i'm talking about the medical de uh, medicine department is mandatory before the surgical department so before going to the surgery your uh, surgery department you have to be cleared fit or you have to be done with your med medicine department so uh, on the say on that day the day was over so on the last next day 
for the surgical department they will uh, i must tell you that uh, i'm telling you in a very simplified way but you will need to wait a lot you will be given the last priority in those thing uh you will be given uh, the in fact it is written in their uh, procedure that we uh, emergency patients and then opd then officers and something be li uh, like this and then the ssb candidate so you will be given the last preference and when all the patients are done you will be checked so this is why uh, this procedure takes a lot of time for the medicine i waited for uh, from 9 in the morning to 145 and then uh, at 145 i was done with my medicine department and similarly other things like ent ie testing and those things so it, it is taking a lot of time you will it will be uh, real test of patients actually so for the surgical department, I think there's a more uh, more kind of a surgical department is uh, very famous for getting a lot of rejections. So surgical department main purpose is to check the body structure. If there is already a surgery or something like this or sub abnormality in your body structure like uh, flat foot, uh, knock knees, uh, carrying angle, tennis elbow, something like this, and also. Uh, your private parts would be checked. So in my surgical department, I was made to wait. Uh, after going in the cabin, I was made to wait five minutes in the in the very chilled AC. So my and I was uh, I was nude. I was stripped with my clothes just for the, for the checking. So after the after that five minutes, I was called. My uh, flat foot was checked. Uh, my knock knees were checked. My carrying angle was checked, and then. Uh, uh, then he checked my private parts by opening the skin and and uh, those parts and then told me to turn back and he checked checked for fi files so these things went by and the last he just asked me where are you from and all those things that mostly all the doctors will ask you and they will just wish you a good luck so after that surgical department in the same day itself uh, we tried to get the conference so in conference medical conference there will be a set of three doctors that is appointed by the uh, hospital itself and they will uh, review your result for the, all the five departments and they will just mark you for the fit or unfit and if you are unfit you will be uh, told about the procedure of the next uh, next uh, you will told about the next procedure like uh, appeal medical board or review, review medical board so those things were uh, not uh, the, not applicable for me i will declare fit for all the departments and just they wish me luck and so goodbye so that is how actually i, uh, I again i tell you that i told you in very simplified manner but my whole things went for eight days and in that eight days two days were completely uh useless because uh, some of the doctors were in ot or inspection kind of thing and also the covid had just started so they were just taking precaution and only allowing few, few people so this is how my medicals went in and I was declared fit. So I'm just waiting for merit list and appointment later. So that's all from my side. Thank you and all the best to everyone.